Section 15 of the Boy Scouts Handbook. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Catherine. The Boy Scouts Handbook by the Boy Scouts of America. Section 15. Woodcraft, Part 10. Plants, Ferns, and Grasses by Dr. L. C. Corbett, Horticulturist, United States Bureau of Plant Industry. The appearance of the blossoms and fruits of the fields and forests in any locality note the advent and progress of the seasons more accurately than does the calendar. Plants and seeds which have lain asleep during the winter are awakened not by the birth of a month, but by the return of heat and moisture in proper proportions. This may be early one year and late another, but no matter what the calendar says, the plants respond to the call and give evidence of spring, summer, or autumn, as the case may be. The surface of the earth is not flat. We have valleys and we have mountains. We have torrid and we have temperate zones. The plant life of the world has been adjusted to these varied conditions, and as a result we have plants with certain characteristics growing in the tropics at sea level, but a very different class of plants with different habits and characteristics inhabiting the elevated regions of this same zone. It must be remembered that even under the tropics some of the highest mountains carry a perpetual snow cap. There is therefore all possible gradations of climate from sea level to the top of such mountains, even at the equator, and plant life is as a result as varied as is climate. Each zone, whether determined by latitude or by altitude, possesses a distinctive flora. But altitude and latitude are not the only factors which have been instrumental in determining the plants found in any particular locality. This old earth of ours has not always been as we see her today. The nature we know and observe is quite different from that which existed in earlier ages of the earth's history. The plants, the trees, and the flowers that existed upon the earth during the age when our coal was being deposited were very different from those we now have. There has been a change, but, strange as it may seem, there are in some places upon the earth today some of the same species of plants which were abundant during the coal-forming periods. These are among the oldest representatives of the plant world now extant. Then we are told that there was a period when the north temperate zone was covered with a great ice field which crowded down as far as southern Pennsylvania and central Ohio. This naturally brought about a profound change in the location and character of the plants of this region. There are in the Black Hills of Dakota species of plants which have no relatives anywhere in the prairie region, and no means is known by which these representatives of a Rocky Mountain family could find their way into the Black Hills, save that previous to the Ice Age this species was generally scattered over the territory, and that during the Ice Age the species was perpetuated in the hills, but was killed out between there and the Rocky Mountains where it is found in abundance. These are some of the natural reasons for the existence of varied plants in different localities. They are sufficient to explain the reason for the existence of local floras. But nature has provided untold ways for the perpetuation as well as the dispersal of plants, for the purpose of, so far as possible, enabling the plants of the world to take possession of all parts of the earth's surface. If this adjustment were complete, the plants would be practically alike all over the surface of the earth, but we have already explained why this cannot be, and why we have a different flora in each zone, whether it be marked by lines of latitude or height of the mountains. Plants are perpetuated by seeds, by bulbs, and by woody parts. Some seeds are highly perishable and must be sown as soon as ripe. Others remain years without losing their power to produce plants. Some grow as soon as they come in contact with the soil. Others must fall, be buried, and frozen before they will germinate. 
some plants are perpetuated by bulbs tubers or roots in which a supply of food material is stored away to carry the plant over a period when its above ground parts cannot thrive owing to frost or drought upon the return of favorable conditions these resting parts throw out shoots and again make the round of growth usually producing both seeds and underground parts for the preservation of the species there are both wild and cultivated plants in nearly all sections which illustrate these methods of preservation besides plants which have bulbs tubers or perennial roots we have the large woody plants which live many years and so perpetuate themselves not only as individuals the same as plants with perennial roots but they too as a rule produce seeds for the multiplication of their kind the agencies which serve to spread plants about over the earth's surface are very varied and interesting nature has provided seeds with many appendages which assist in their dispersal some seeds have wings and some parachutes to take advantage of the wind some seeds are provided with hooks and stickers by which they become attached to the fur of animals and are in this way enabled to steal a free ride other seeds are provided with edible coverings to attract birds but the seeds themselves are hard and not digestible the fruit is eaten and the seeds rejected and so plants are scattered besides these methods of perpetuation and dispersal some plants are perpetuated as well as dispersed by vegetative reproduction i e by cuttings as in the case of willows by runners as in the case of strawberry and by stolons as with the black raspberry for further information on this point see bailey's lessons with plants some plant characteristics however of greatest interest to the scout may be enumerated plants not only mark zones but they indicate soils with certain characteristics and the crop wise say that the soil on which chestnut abounds is suitable for buckwheat or peaches plants also indicate the influence of local conditions such as lakes ponds or even variations in contour a knowledge of the local flora of a region will at once tell one whether he is upon a northern or southern hillside by the plants of the area a creek bottom will abound with species not to be found on the hillside but species common to both plain and mountain will mark the progress of the season up the slope in the north temperate zone the moss if any will be found growing upon the north side of the tree trunk each hundred feet of elevation in a given latitude makes from one to two days difference in time of blooming of plants the character of the vegetation of a region is an index to its climate certain plants are adapted to frigid regions others to temperate and still others to tropical areas some plants are adapted to humid sections while others are admirably adjusted to desert conditions a knowledge of these differences in plants will be of the greatest value to the scout and if this is supplemented by information about the value and uses of the various plant products many hardships can be avoided many plants produce valuable juices gums and resins while others yield as valuable timber for building and cabinet uses while it is impossible to even suggest the great variety of plants found within the confines of the united states the following books on botany will be found helpful in each of the different sections for which they are designed bibliography for the botany of the northeastern united states use new manual of botany seventh edition asa gray illustrated flora of the united states and canada n l britton and honorary addison brown for the botany of the southern united states use flora of the southern united states a w chapman southern wild flowers and trees alice loonsbury for the botany of the rocky mountain region use new manual of botany of the central rocky mountains john m coulter revised by avon nelson rocky mountain wild flower studies burton o longyear the trees of california willis lynn jepson for general information regarding the shrubby plants in the united states use our shrubs of the united states 
Austin C. Apgar. Our Northern Shrubs. Harriet Louise Keeler. For the wild flowers outside of those already mentioned for the southern United States and the Rocky Mountain region, use Our Garden Flowers. Harriet Louise Keeler. How to Know the Wild Flowers. Frances Theodora Parsons. Field Book of American Wild Flowers. F. Schuyler Matthews. For the ferns and grasses it will be found worthwhile to consult How to Know the Ferns, Francis Theodora Parsons. The Fern Collector's Guide, Williard Nelson Clute. New England Ferns and Their Common Allies, Helen Eastman. The Grasses, Sedges, and Rushes of the North United States, Edward Noble. For the study of the monarchs of our forests, the following books will be found exceedingly useful. Manual of the Trees of North America, Charles Sprague Sargent. Trees of the Northern United States, Austin C. Apgar. Handbook of the Trees of the Northern United States and Canada, Romain Beck Ho. North American Trees, N. L. Britton. Familiar Trees and Their Leaves, 1911. F. Schuyler Matthews. Besides these, several states have issued through their state experiment station bulletins dealing with the local plant inhabitants. In some instances, these publications cover forest trees, grasses, and shrubs, either native or introduced. Several of the educational institutions, as well as the experiment stations, now regularly issue nature study leaflets or bulletins which treat of popular subjects of interest in connection with outdoor things. It would be well to write the state experiment station in your state for literature of this nature. End of section 15